Good evening. I'm Lou Tuosto, and this is Let's Talk with Lou. Tonight, uh, as usual, we have a, a wonderful guest, and he's going to talk about uh, post-election rap kinds of issues and uh, all the things that have uh, gone through. Uh, it's a couple days after the election day, and we're going to talk to uh, none other than uh, John Leopold, uh, District 1 uh, County Supervisor. So thank you for being here, John. Great to be here tonight, Lou. Thank you for inviting me. We get to talk about the fun stuff uh, and how all those things that went through or didn't go through uh, are going to affect our community, predominantly Santa Cruz County, uh, as well as the state and a little bit on national uh, politics as well. Uh, I know John's really plugged in uh, with those kinds of issues and has been for some years, and it's always a pleasure to have him on the show. A little bit about his background. Uh, John was elected uh, as the District 1 County Supervisor in 2008, um, Chair of the Regional Transportation uh, he's on LAFCO, uh, a Cabrillo College trustee, former uh, Cabrillo College trustee, and, and he's been a Live Oak resident for over 25 years. And again, it's, it's a great pleasure to have you here uh, tonight, John. And first of all, uh, just for our listening audience, if we can talk, could you talk about uh, what a supervisor does in general in your district and what it entails? Sure. Well, uh, county supervisors uh, perform all the functions you would think of in local government. And in Santa Cruz County, we, it's, it's a little bit more than most county supervisors because half the people who live in Santa Cruz County live outside of cities. They live in the unincorporated areas. So we perform a lot of the same functions as a city council. Uh, we're responsible for dealing with uh, issues of planning and we try to, as a county supervisor, we work on our, our planning policies and uh, we, uh, we answer concerns that uh, people have about development in their neighborhood. Uh, we work on making sure that there's money uh, and that we can take care of our infrastructure like roads and parks. Uh, we have the, the sheriff's office, which is our police force. Um, and uh, those are, are tr sort of traditional roles of what you would expect in a city council. Um, but in addition, county uh, supervisors are responsible for health and human services. So that could be everything from child welfare services, um, uh, uh, provision of uh, benefits uh, like food stamps, um, uh, health services like our public health nurses, uh, our environmental health program, uh, those kind of programs. And in addition, county government runs the county jail. So every police department brings their, um, uh, the, those who are arrested to our county jail. Um, the, one of the big differences is if the city of Santa Cruz might be 55 or 60,000 people, that's about the size of my district. It's around 55,000 people. And there isn't, six other, <clears throat> there isn't six other members. There's me. Most of the district that I represent, Live Oak, Soquel, Santa Cruz Gardens, the Summit area, is all unincorporated. Mm -hmm. So on any given day in my office, we're taking care of concerns about the dog barking next door, the development down the street, mm -hmm. uh, or trying to think about the economic future of people in Santa Cruz County. Is there any overlap with what county supervisors do in, let's say, city councils? I know they <clears> kind <throat> of butt up to each other because you're close to uh, Capitola, but th that's a separate entity in, in any cities <clears throat> that you might be close to or different, or different uh, jurisdictions. Well, I mean, the, the, we, there are some places where we work together, but things like land use, uh, a public safety, those are each done within each jurisdiction, mm -hmm. um, but we are both we all serve on our regional transportation body, the Regional Transportation Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, we serve on things like LAFCO, which you mentioned. I'm on the Local Agency Formation Commission. Uh, some of us uh, may uh, serve on AMBAG, the Association of Monterey Bay Area Government, a, a, a metropolitan planning organization in three counties. Mm -hmm. So there's, and I represent, in addition to most of my district is unincorporated, but I also represent portions of the city of Capitola, the city of Santa Cruz, and the city of Scotts Valley. So, um, so in those areas, I work with the council members of, the, of those particular cities on uh, issues of common concern. So, so there is overlap or there or isn't then? Uh, there is, a, well, well the, there's, we overlap in terms of who our constituents are, uh, but if, if you live in the Prospect Heights, area of the city of Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. and you want to build something, you're going to go to the city of Santa Cruz to get your permit. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, you, you want greater police protection, you're going to go to the city of Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about mental health services or uh, restorative justice in, in our county criminal justice system, mm -hmm. you're going to talk to me. And it could, you also could be talking to city council members who care about those issues. Mm -hmm. But the county's responsible for providing that. Okay. Okay, good. Well, that's good. 
Um, I always like to start the show that way uh, and, and you know, kind of get in some, what do you do and who are you? And I think everybody knows you because you've been around for a lot of years. But, you know, what, what are the responsibilities um, uh, of a county supervisor? And, and I think you covered it uh, quite nicely. Um, in in kind of warming up for some of the things, just again, we're just, just a couple of days away from uh, the election ha having ended, and there's some, uh, some uh, measures out there, some propositions we're going to talk about, uh, talk a little bit about the federal election uh, and, and the House and sure. the control, uh, and, and what, the, what does that mean to us. Uh, and I'm mostly concerned about that, uh, and since this is community TV, it's mostly about Santa Cruz County, and we, sure. we get out to almost every part of the county except for some, some areas uh, that don't have Comcast. Um, so let's talk about uh, Measure G, uh, and it looks like it's passed or it has passed. Yeah, I mean, uh, Measure G was a uh, county sales tax increase only in the unincorporated area uh, to uh, provide resources for things that we heard community residents say that they want. Yeah. Um, they wanted a, a stronger mental health program, and so uh, the sheriff came to us with a new program that uh, coupling uh, deputies with uh, cl clinicians to take care of the folks who uh, generate the, some of the biggest problems we have in the community. Mm -hmm. um, people have told us that they, they care about and they need to do something about the homeless. Uh, so Measure G would provide funding for a new year-round shelters in both North and South County. Mm -hmm. uh, people always uh, care about and have strongly supported our county park system. And so this was going to be able to do some capital investment that we weren't able to do during the years of the Great Recession into our county uh, park system. And, and uh, help complete parks and build some parks um, all over the county, uh, uh, several in, in uh, the first district in Soquel at the farm park, the heart of Soquel Park, mm -hmm. and the, the, the big park was Chanticleer Park with the Leo's Haven. It was going to be the first all-inclusive park where kids of all abilities uh, uh, can play together. Uh, and uh, historically, counties have not had the ability uh, to raise a sales tax. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, in Santa Cruz County, half the population lives in the city and half the populations live in the unincorporated area. Mm -hmm. That's not like other, other places. In Santa Clara County, 95% of the population of that county live in cities. Only 5% live in the unincorporated area. So here in Santa Cruz, county government provides a lot of municipal services as well as all the county services, mm -hmm. but we haven't had the same funding mechanisms that uh, that our uh, that cities have had, so um, that was California uh, state law. We couldn't do it. So we went to our local assemblyman Mark Stone, mm -hmm. and we said we'd like the ability to be able to ask people to do that. Um, he passed the bill through the legislature. We are the first county that has uh, ever tried to do it, um, and we asked uh, people to to raise their sales tax in the unincorporated area uh, a half cent which would bring it up to still being the lowest in Santa Cruz County, because we've never been able to raise it okay. before. Uh, but it would bring in significant resources that would really help out the issues that people have told us they want us to address. Well, I understand, too, there, uh, if I can uh, inject, I understand, too, there was something that was going away, a half a cent, uh, it was sunsetting in the county, uh, and then, so this kind of replaced that? Was that it? No, there, w there wasn't, the, the, as, as I said, the county's never had the ability to have a sales tax. Huh. Uh, so uh, there are sales taxes in other places that, that sunset. Ours, Measure G, uh, is a 12-year sales, sales tax, so huh. it will, it will uh, sunset after 12 years. Okay. Um, and uh, then cities have done that as well, uh, where they say we have a particular problem, there's, there's right. a limited time in which we're going to be doing it. Yeah. So uh, the, the, by the nature of it, it requires a majority vote, mm -hmm. and we're very pleased with the, uh, the outcome so far. We're a little over 63%. Is that pretty solid? It's That's not... pretty solid. We don't expect that. Uh, it'll go up a few points or maybe even down a few points, but since you only need 50% plus one, it, 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 we feel fairly confident that it'll pass. Was there any tie-in with this uh, it being a self, now that we're a self-help uh, uh, county, uh, or, or was that kind of a separate issue? Uh, do we get any matching dollars from this or not really? No, well, it, it, it will help us access some funds that, uh, on homeless services that will be provided through uh, the, the recently passed Proposition uh, 1 and 2 that were on the ballot as well. Uh, that'll help us access some uh, matching funds. Uh, but this is really to take care of services here. Mm -hmm. and provide services not only uh, in the unincorporated, but uh, also for uh, uh, a lot of the cities. Uh, you know, the shelters will be available to the homeless that are throughout Santa Cruz County, mm -hmm. in both North and South County. Mm -hmm. uh, the mental health services will be services that will be available for 
um, for everyone in Santa Cruz County. It won't be limited to the unincorporated area. Okay, okay. Uh, and then uh, in terms of, every, it went to the ballot for everybody, but it will just affect the unincorporated area, is that it? Yeah, it's a, it, this is a strange quirk of, of uh, California state law. Uh, although, uh, uh, when the city has a sales tax measure on there, I can't vote for it because I live in Live Oak, an unincorporated community. Mm -hmm. um, when this county has a sales tax that's only going to be in the unincorporated area, the unincorporated residents vote on it. But since everybody in Santa Cruz County is a county resident, mm -hmm. even if they live in the cities, they also get to vote on it. It won't happen. It, there was no increase in the city of Santa Cruz, Watsonville, Capitola, or Scotts Valley, but everybody got a chance to vote on it. Oh, very unique then. So it's, uh, uh, we still had to run a countywide campaign, yeah. which is not inexpensive, but uh, people have responded uh, quite well. In the earlier returns, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it got a majority in um, all five districts in every city. So uh, I think that's a good uh, vote of confidence for the county. We, you know, we've worked very hard, especially in the last five years, to really create a strong financial foundation for the county coming out of the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. We made some, some key decisions as a board of supervisors to strengthen our financial position, increase our reserves. We've tripled our reserves. We didn't have any going into the Great Recessions, really. Um, that has helped improve our credit rating, which means that when we have to borrow money, it's less expensive. Uh, we have renegotiated our pension and our retiree health benefits, saving us hundreds of millions of dollars. Last year, we engaged in a program to add solar panels on most of our facilities, which is going to save us $28 million over the next 20 years. So we've been working very hard to, um, to make sure that the county's in a good financial position. Mm -hmm. We have about 250 less employees than we did um, at the start of the Great Recession, and yeah. we're probably not going to get them back. It's, it's, um, this, is, this is where we are as a uh, county government, um, and we want to make sure that when people ask us for services, we're going to work very hard um, uh, to provide them. Okay. So that's going to bring in some revenue. Uh, it sounds like uh, I, I'm sure everybody at the county level is very pleased that uh, the voters uh, said yes to that because uh, it's going to make a difference. Uh, it's going to make a difference that we're all going to see uh, in the unincorporated areas uh, for sure, but everybody was behind it. So that, that's, uh, that's very impressive that uh, we got it passed uh, and, and, and now we've got some things to look forward to uh, in infrastructure and some other uh, probably maintenance things and a lot of things that we've needed uh, and maybe for a while. Um, There's a lot of things we deferred during the Great Recession that we're now going to be able to invest in. Yeah. This has millions of dollars for our county park system, yeah. which, you know, during the Great Recession, we actually closed our parks department. We merged it with, uh, with Public Works because um, uh, that's how bad it was. Wow. Uh, so now we have a, a, a self-standing uh, parks department, but we need to invest in our resources and add some parks maintenance staff to be able to take care of our, uh, of our assets. So this is a great way to be able to do it. Can you promise less gopher <coughs> holes in some of the parks? <laughs> uh, we, I can't. I, well, I can say that we'll be able to fill them in as quickly as they come. Yeah, so. that's, that's okay. Uh, good information, uh, John. You know, let's talk a little bit about uh, Proposition Five and Proposition Six. Um, you know, certainly, uh, I think the well. Let's talk. With, let's talk about Proposition Six. The uh, the repeal potential uh, that they were they were trying to do was repeal the gas tax. Sure. Uh, and so, what happened with that, and what what's going to be the effect of that uh, in a positive way? Because I think I heard some real good things about what happened. Yeah. So um, the state legislature went through a period of years where they took transportation funding, funding that was approved by the voters, mm -hmm. and um, and took it to to repair the great uh, billions of dollars of budget deficits we had mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Um, and there was a real lack of investment in our infrastructure. And so last year, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, uh, last year the legislature uh, passed SB1, uh, which was, uh, required a two-thirds majority of both houses. Uh, and it was a historic funding bill for our roads and bridges. Uh, it included an increase in our gas tax, which hadn't been increased since 1993. Mm -hmm. uh, it in included a, uh, increases in our diesel tax, so uh, trucks pay their fair share. Uh, it, in it included uh, special registration fees for electric cars who don't use gas. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a $5 billion a year measure for the, uh, for the state of California. Here in Santa Cruz, just in the unincorporated area alone, it, it adds over six and a half million dollars of funding for our local roads. 
we haven't had that kind of funding in decades. And we, we did pass a, a self-help measure, Measure D, mm -hmm. uh, in 2016, but we now have twice as much money because of SB1 uh, than we did beforehand. Uh, so that was a great win, and it was, it was uh, the business community and the labor community, local government joining together to get it passed. Uh, unfortunately, um, there was a cynical attempt by Republicans to boost turnout uh, to help to try to elect uh, Republicans on a statewide basis and to save congressional seats in Southern California especially, uh, to put a repeal measure on there mm -hmm. uh, that would have taken away all that money and placed us uh, at greater risk. And, and I understand it, was a, it would have been a minimal savings uh, per driver per year anyways if it would have uh, happened. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's a 12 cents a gallon uh, gas tax. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, the, the, the concept behind that is the people who use the road pay for the repair. Uh, uh, but this wasn't, this wasn't a good government. This wasn't thinking about how you meet the infrastructure needs of the, of the state. It was just a, 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 a cynical political ploy to drive people to the polls to, to help support Republican candidates. Mm -hmm. It was funded by people like Kevin McCarthy and the California Republican Party, uh, congressional candidates. Um, so uh, they were using it to boost turnout and placing us all at risk. Mm -hmm. The voters in the state of California saw through that. Um, and when you have the Chamber of Commerce and the Federation of Labor and the California League of Cities and the California State Association of Counties all coming out against it, people heard that message and they handily defeated uh, uh, Proposition 6, which means that we have the resources uh, to be able to take care of the 600-mile road system just in the unincorporated area. Mm. And uh, we now think that we might be able to get out to every single road over the next 10 years. Mm. That we've, uh, we've been doing triage for so long that that's a real change in, in uh, concept mm -hmm. for what we do at, in public work. Very good, very good. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, Proposition 5. Uh, we had a little bit of conversation before we started the show, and I think another name for that is, is the Empty Nesters Initiative, I think. Yeah, well, this was, this was a, a measure put on by the Real Estate Association, and uh, they said it was to, to help deal with the housing crisis because as people get older and their kids move out, uh, in, a, in a normal system, they move to a smaller house. Mm -hmm. um, but if they've lived in their house a long time, they have a low property tax value. So there's, there's a disincentive to move. Uh, because your property tax would go up so much, uh, because that's the way Proposition 13 was, uh, was designed. Rather than having an equal way that every, each house in this neighborhood could pay the same amount, we only get to increase the property tax when someone sells the house. So um, they want to sell more houses. Uh, and uh, let's say I, I believe that the altruistic thing that they want to make um, uh, that, that they want to make these larger houses available to families and help seniors mm -hmm. move into smaller houses. Um, but Proposition 13 is a, is a f was and is a flawed tax uh, regimen, and this uh, Proposition 5 would have made things worse for local government because it would have allowed people to take their low property tax bill and move anywhere uh, and keep on paying that low property tax. Well, property tax is one of the the two main sources of funding yeah. for local government. Sales tax is the other one. And uh, if you, if you uh, artificially deflate um, the property tax revenue, you're going to affect services. So people with homes in Santa Cruz aren't going to move to Modesto. Mm -hmm. But people from Modesto may choose to retire here and keep their property tax bill from uh, Modesto and, and move here uh, and want services but not actually pay for them. So uh, local government, again, w was against this measure, um, and a lot of civic groups uh, were against it. The California Democratic Party was against it. Um, and the voters were able to see through that, that, uh, that this, this benefit would actually be a detriment uh, to providing local services. We need a fix in Proposition 13. There's go in 2020, there's already an initiative that's qualified to do something called a split roll. Uh, property tax, which is one of, the, one of the inconsistencies and inequity of Proposition 13 is that when you or I move to a new home, we pay that uh, higher tax bill. When businesses move around, they have ways in which to create shell companies so they don't actually 
pay the higher tax bill. And their taxes have been artificially low for nearly 40 years. And uh, this is trying to get them to pay a fairer share of, uh, the, uh, of the taxes here in California. So that'll be a big fight um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, but we really need to fix the, uh, lot, there's a lot of inequity in Proposition 13. And uh, there, there might be things that you think are good about it, but, but it doesn't treat counties, every county the same way. Uh, it benefits uh, big business over the uh, single family home. And the effect on local government is real. And so uh, I look forward to that discussion in 2020, but I'm glad voters uh, did not approve Proposition 5. So uh, we still can change, uh, go from county to county, but there are just specifically a certain amount of counties that we can take our lower tax basis with us. Uh, how does that work uh, um, now? Counties have to approve uh, uh, whether they would uh, uh, take the, people right now, if they're over 55, are allowed to apply mm -hmm. uh, for uh, um, this benefit. And there are some counties that take it and some that don't. And we're one that does. We're one that does sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, um, uh, you, you see it in, in the more interior counties are all very accommodating for it uh, because they want people to move there. We don't have a problem with people moving here. Okay. Okay, good. Good. Um, that's, that's a very interesting uh, topic. Uh, we talked about it uh, when... Um, uh, the tax assessor, Sean uh, Saldivia, was on the show some time ago when he first took office, and boy, it was engaging. Uh, you know, it's, it was very interesting stuff. If you can make taxes interesting, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. Um, well, actually, we're down to the last six minutes. Uh, time goes by when you're having fun, for sure, uh, and such engaging uh, information, too. Sure. So thank you, John. Um, how does the federal election, and we're probably going to skip through this real quick, but uh, how does the, having the, uh, the control of the House with the Democrats affect Santa Cruz County, or does it? Well, I, I think there's uh, a lot of ways in which we are able to stop the attacks that have been happening on California. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, the, the Attorney General and the President try to uh, uh, ban communities like ours and even the whole state from accessing uh, f uh, federal justice uh, department grants mm -hmm. uh, because we did not want to provide immigration services. We think that's the federal government's role. Mm -hmm. um, and we had to take them to court. Uh, we won in court, uh, uh, but uh, with a Democratic-controlled uh, uh, House of Representatives, it means that there's going to be a check on, on uh, the federal administration, so there won't be these efforts that will target states like California. You know, the, 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 the tax cut that they gave to the wealthy uh, uh, this time last year really hits California hard. It hit New York and New Jersey, states that vote Democratic because there wasn't a check on, on the federal power. Uh, the, 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 neither houses in Congress were, had uh, Democratic control. And so you got a bill that was really uh, a hit on, um, on Democratic states. So, so with a Democratic controlled Congress, we won't have that as much anymore. Okay, good. I know we're, we're skipping along, but I did want to talk probably about, for about two minutes um, or less um, <clears throat> about Measure H uh, failing and how does that affect Santa Cruz County? Yeah, it's very unfortunate that, uh, that voters did, uh, uh, couldn't find a way to support uh, Measure H, which was a, a bond to build affordable housing here in Santa Cruz County. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, statewide voters supported Proposition 1 and 2, uh, which were uh, major uh, billion dollar uh, housing bonds. Uh, that will help us build affordable housing. The county is trying to use its own property to build affordable housing. We have a project going on Capitola Road that's going to build 60 units of affordable housing, mm -hmm. a new dental clinic, and a new health clinic. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other land that we uh, uh, rezoned uh, in Soquel uh, a decade ago that now is going to have slightly uh, denser housing. So we're trying to figure out ways that we can build affordable housing because there's what we know is it's, it's hard for people to stay and live here. And so we need to figure out a way that we can provide truly permanent affordable housing. So the people that work in county government, the people that work at the coffee shop, the people that clean our clothes, that they also have a place to live. Well, and I keep thinking, uh, you know, the, the, the jewel of, I think, Monterey Bay is Cabrillo College, and we get such high-end uh, kids coming out of Cabrillo, hygienists and nurses and uh, uh, those folks that make pretty good money, uh, you know, as they're coming out, and, and they can't afford to stay in the community that they've loved and cared for for so many years, and that's, uh, that's, that's tough. Uh, yeah, I mean, people coming out of the Cabrillo nursing program can graduate into a sixty to $80,000 a year job. Yeah. That's not enough. 
yeah. to, uh, to, to purchase a home here in Santa Cruz. may not even be enough to rent a, a, a home here in Santa Cruz. So we have to change that dynamic because we need those nurses, or those radiologic te technicians, so dental hygienists. Sure, sure. Well, that's interesting. Interesting stuff. Um, any last couple things you want, or maybe one one things in two minutes? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot going on uh, right now at the county. We've just we've uh, completed the first phase of a strategic planning process um, that's going to help guide uh, our activities uh, over the next couple of years. We're changing to a two-year budget process, so. One year we'll, we'll go deep onto our budget, and the second year we'll be looking at our metrics to see whether we're actually accomplishing our goals. Right. That's a new way of doing county government. It's a way to hold us more accountable, mm -hmm. making sure that, that we're delivering the services that people want. Uh, so we're, uh, the 2019 is gonna be the first year that we're gonna be doing that, so that's very exciting. In the first district in Live Oak, we have a new library annex being built um, uh, next to the Simpkin Swim Center. Uh, and we have a new library that's going to be, uh, that they're going to uh, ground, do the groundbreaking in Capitola uh, tomorrow. So there's, so there's a lot of excitement there. We're mm -hmm. working on building the trail next to the rail line. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to start construction next year, and we've already funded 25% of the, uh, the construction, so that's very exciting. Um, and so there's lots of opportunities uh, in Santa Cruz County. There's a lot of good things happening in county government. Uh, we're trying to be more responsive uh, to the public. Mm -hmm. and we're trying to engage the public in what we do. Excellent, John. As usual, uh, wonderful information. You're so informed, uh, and I just feel uh, uh, very fortunate to have you on the show, and thank you for being here. And I just want to remind uh, our listening audience that uh, Community TV, uh, we use volunteers, and tonight we have some of the best, as usual. Uh, Gene Crater was on camera, uh, Dave Goldman as well on camera, audio was Rob Gray, uh, we also had graphics was Karen Scott and co-producer was uh, Keith Gudger. And uh, we just uh, have, have had so many good uh, volunteers that go through community TV uh, and, and they learn all the important things. Uh, myself, I'm a volunteer. We all uh, volunteer. And, and it's so great to have uh, uh, people like yourself, John. They're engaged in the community. Uh, and it's traditionally our electeds because uh, you know so much about what's going on. That's your, that's your job. Uh, and we got it uh, right here uh, live. It, although it wasn't calling, it, it was live. Uh, and it was just right after, uh, you know, the election. And so the things that are just most fresh in our mind, we got to talk about. Sure. Uh, and, and as usual, uh, you did a great job. And uh, we will have you back again, I'm sure. And thank you uh, very much, John. Well, glad to have it. And glad Community TV provides such a useful educational function in the yeah, community. Good. Yeah, good. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks. Sure. We'll just kind of phase this out. Yeah.